got back from the university. Um, and my apologies for being late at the same time. They were in it, so it was cool. They we try and make it a discussion. Usually, with with kids that are 17 to 21 years old, they're not going to be part of a discussion. They're going to kind of let you talk to them. These kids, they were in it. They were asking questions, giving opinions back. It was a it was a great great start uh, to the visit here. So my apologies again for being late, but uh, for all good reasons, I assure you, you should be very proud of the people who wear your collegiate uniform here. They, they got their heads on straight. Really nice. Um, what can I say? Whoever ordered the weather, thank you. <laughs> if we can just hang on to it now, it would be great. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> they said the possibility is only two hours. What are those hours? Oh, yeah, like seven to nine. Perfect. Yeah. Right. Oh, you do? Good. Is it uh, pretty Is it pretty flat here? Is that what you're saying? In Oklahoma, the western part, they say it's so flat if you look hard enough, really look hard enough, you can see the back of your own head. So yeah, so, uh, I know. Uh, I know. I know that that territory for sure. Um, we're excited, uh, really excited. A big thank you uh, to the premier uh, for the second shot at this this show tonight. Uh, very very excited about it. Um, in this world, I don't know how many people are familiar with what we do for a living, but we were lucky enough to do a comeback tour about three years ago. Saskatoon was one of the stops, and we were lucky enough to get multiple nights there. So when you get multiple nights, it takes all the pressure off, and you get to go out and just have fun. You're never going to get to do it the next day and the next day. And stadium shows, the pressure is a little tougher because it's it's a one-night thing. And thanks to the premiere, this is a two-night thing. So I can tell you this as, as the face of the outfit. I'm not going to call me the leader because she's back at the hotel. But uh, as the face of the outfit, um, you can just tell in your crew, your band, the way they walk, the way they talk. They're very relaxed because you can spend a weekend here. Also makes you feel very welcome, which means you're among friends, which means you don't have to impress. You just come here and just do what they're wanting you to do, and that is play the songs. Hopefully they recognize that everybody sing together. And uh, if you're going to break any rules, the two most important ones to break are you play way too loud and you stay way too long. Those are the two you want to break. So we're we're really excited about being here. Um, the venue is gorgeous. And uh, I don't know how many people got to see it yet, but the way the setup is, we've got a, we're trying something a little uh, closer toward the center, which makes everything a little closer in the stadium. And so um, I'm about to walk the stadium and the, the stage for the first time, but I got to peek at it as we were coming this way. And it just, it looks like this is going to be the perfect place to put a stage like this in the middle. So we're really, really looking forward to, you can call it a stadium. We're going to call it a big ass honky donk. That's what we're going to call it. And we're going to try and shrink this thing down. And it's going to be where everybody's singing. And uh, our job is to get those people in the very back rows, get them into the party. Because when they get involved, that's, that's where it really gets fun. Um, I'm not that great at talking at you. I'd rather talk with you. So we do a lot of question and answer here. Uh, Miss Kim, we're not in any time crunch, are we? Well, uh. <laughs> we, we have a big crowd today. We do have a lot to get to today. So when they have a lot of questions, okay, good. Right, we'll let you get straight on, on that. Good, good, good. Uh, anything we need to cover before? We told them, uh, you know, that you would talk about your new song, Dive Bar, hoping that you would talk about that a little bit. And vinyl, if you'll talk about that with them, we covered it some. And other than that, Okay. Well, let's let's talk about the first thing. Let's talk about uh, uh, Regina. Let's talk about the stadium, and uh, uh, let's talk about what we call general admission. Uh, it's just something we've never done before. So I think we we have decided just not to do general admission. Uh, so the back will be just the, the just the artwork of, of the tiers uh, back there. But just it's just not our thing. Um, it's something that we're just not educated in. Uh, in this in this kind of format, you get a lot of uh, you get a, get a lot of GA on the floor in Europe, uh, a lot out there, but nothing like it is here. Looks like they're pretty cool seats, but we decided just not to do them. Um, so this should be pretty fun. Uh, there's still going to be a 360 performance because there's a lot of people on the floor all around the stage. So our job is to make every seat as good as it possibly can be. So that's that's going to be the goal. 
uh, how we get there. As far as the uh, legacy, uh, you're going to have to go correct me on anything that I say it's not right. This is not available in Canada, but um, you know everything that is a blessing is a curse. The you know you can say what you want about the internet and all the bad things about it. The great thing about it is it makes everybody instant neighbors. So we have a ton of people from Canada that are finding friends in, in the United States that are observing this uh, for them as well. I will tell you, um, it is limited. All the number, all the all the units are gone. Uh, the uh, uh, all retail has been promised all units, so there won't be any surplus. So it is the retail guys that are carrying it. A couple of them are carried online right now, I believe, as far as pre-order, and always through GarthBirds.com. Uh, you can get them as well, but. This is going to have to be something that's bought in the states and then either shipped up here or we have a ton of canadian people that make the travel down the states to see the city of georgia but uh that's all there are any second presses on that no 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 it's it's vinyl and and we you want to it's kind of like the stadium show um i'm sorry sir your name glenn, glenn. uh glenn for me it's uh it's all about if you want people to have something that's special then have it be not there tomorrow kind of thing so uh they've invested in this it took eight months for these packages to be made they're hand packed also when we so we started in january with pre-orders blown away with the with the i'm blown away with vinyl are you kidding me it, it's the, it's the age of streaming it's the age of disposable music vinyl they have to buy it and and they're buying it like like it's like it's the 70s again i i would have never guessed it in a million years but the message that it's sending me, and you might have a different opinion, if you if you know vinyl, if anybody in this room's ever had vinyl, you have to tend it. You have to be careful with it. You have to place the needle in. There is no Alexa next. You play D cuss and side two, three, four, five. And then right in the middle of this beautiful moment, oh, God, I gotta get my hands up and I gotta go change it, right? You gotta flip it over again. Be careful and no next. You go all the way to the end. For me, that's sending a message that people want to people want to, want that music to be theirs. I want to say own it, but that sounds like it's financial. What I love is they want to claim it for theirs. This is mine. And so when they do that to the music, then the guy that's lucky enough to play that music, they treat him the same way. They don't treat him as disposable. They treat him as somebody that makes music that hopefully they can relate to. That's what I'm saying is going to be filling those seats tonight, tomorrow night. And that makes me the luckiest guy in the world to get to walk out and play for people that treat music like that. You know, the energy that you, you have on stage, you know, the treat that means, and, and this positivity that you do, uh, do you, is, is it the purpose of doing this garden? Do you continue with these huge shows year after year? In this day and age, and I think the world needs this kind of positive energy. It's not just you, but sharing it, like you uh -huh. say, with everybody. Right to the far end of that stadium. That's, 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 that's very sweet for you to say that. I don't look at it that way. When you said three decades, here's going to be the math that's going to blow you away. 90 through 98, we toured. Now start retirement in 2000. From, four, from the end of 14 to now, so 15 to now is four years, eight years. We've been doing this 12 years. That's the crazy thing. It might have spanned over three decades. But we've only been doing this 12 years. So I think we have, I think this band and crew has done it the right way. And I think that they, I'm going to take me out of it. I think they have earned the right to play stadiums because they've played every honky tonk dive, every arena, every state fair. They have earned the right to, to get to try stadiums. What allows you to play stadiums are those sweet people that fill up those seats. So our job, we, we thought we were at the level where we go, hey, we're going to make them available. People want them. Great if they don't. No, you know, nobody's going to be brokenhearted. And uh, they've allowed us to feel like we're a stadium act now. But if you think I think a stadium act's cooler than a honky tonk act, I think they're the same. We're, we're doing dive bar tours right now because of the single with Blank. And I got to tell you, there's as much energy in Denver, 85,000 people. There was that much energy in Joe's in Chicago with 500 people. And you put that under a roof. That's some crazy action that goes on, and that's that's fun, you know. So, so it's pretty cool. You kind of get to live both lives right now, and because of God and the people, you get to live the life of a stadium artist that gets to go to honky tonks. And if 
you ask anybody, let's, let's say Lou Bryant, uh, you ask, um, you can ask Luke Combs, you can ask uh, um, Stapleton, all those guys. If you could have a dream of what you would want, there it is. If you get to be a stadium artist, you can play honky tonks because that's what we all lived. All of us guys came up through the honky tonks, dreaming of playing stadiums and getting to play honky tonks again. That's that's the fun thing. So thank you for what you said. Yes, ma'am. I was wondering, you did. Hi, Sam. Hi, Sam. Uh, you did two shows to benefit the Children's Hospital. Oh, yes, ma'am. Six shows this after two. Saskatchewan's kind of a big, small town. So you've done eight shows here, and now you're doing two more. Why do you keep coming back? Well, I mean, that's the thing. We're not here because we've never been here. Oh, be cool. Let's go play somebody. We're here because we have been here. We're coming back for more. So the truth is, the pressure's not on Fat Boy Slim, right? <laughs> the pressure's on you guys because we came back for more of that. So when we walk out on stage, we're expecting. Let's hear it. Come on, bring it. And these people, if if they're who I think they are, they'll know every syllable of every word and every verse, not just the choruses. And then we sing. That's what, if I hear that, the second that I hear that, this becomes a party. I'm done working for the night, and now I'm just going to take the ride with everybody else. That's, that if you're lazy, that's what you want right there. It's, hard to say. it's just, uh, it's just, let them have fun. Show them, show them that you want to, and then work you guys like rented mules. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I'm just gonna work you into the ground. It's just gonna be so much fun. And I'm hoping that that part of the stadium is louder than the part of the stadium. Yes, ma'am. I'm actually from Lear Post. I'm Ashley. Um, kind of picking up on Sam's question. You have been to Saskatoon several times, but. What did you know about Regina before you ever started coming here? Oh, what you know is in the middle of it. So Saskatoon, I don't expect you to remember Saskatoon, but we when we played Saskatoon, the crowd was like stupid crazy. <laughs> and people were going, this isn't Saskatoon. What do you mean? Because they don't stand the whole show. They're, they're polite. They applaud. I said, hell, we barely got out of there with our lives. So I want that. I love those people because to me, I think they're being, they're allowing themselves to be what the music fills them to be. So tonight, what am I looking for? I'm looking for those people that think they're the only person in the state that's singing with their eyes closed, slinging their arms, and the people next to them, you know, are doing that. It's the greatest thing because I have the greatest seat in the house, so I get to see everybody. So that's what that's what I came back here is to find those nuts that were in Saskatoon and turn them outdoor. Because outdoor, it gets it gets louder, it gets wilder. Uh, I'm going to be, well, I've always been honest to, to you a lot of times, but I should have kept my mouth shut. Um, I thought stadium tours were going to be cold, echoey. But I thought if you're going to be an artist that progresses, you want to say I'm a stadium tour. Or you, you, know, you just do your ego. This has been the warmest tour of my life. It's like they're right there. Denver might have been the best night of my life. 85,000 people in one area. But I swear to God, the people at the very last row, you could feel them. They were in it. And that, I mean, as a guy, I hate to say size matters. <laughs> it does. And that's, that's nice to get that feeling right there. Yes, ma'am. So, um, out of your entire catalog and what gets the crowd going, what would be your favorite song performance? Well, I know your favorite songs sometimes aren't the ones that get the crowd going. There's some of the ballads. So, uh, the one that flies under the radar when people go, What's your favorite song to perform? For me, it's a song called Call in Baton Rouge. Now, if you're a Garth fan, you'll know that. If you're a Garth fan that knows Friends of Old Places, Thunder Rolls, you might not know that song. Watch what happens. And it's, it's, it's so silly. It's a song about a town you're not playing in, but they don't care. They love the whole fiddle thing. They just love how it jumps out. And the next thing you know, it's, it's, um, whew, how do I say this? Dang, I don't know. It's like sex. So before you know, you know, it's like, boom, it's great. And everybody has a fun time. And then it's just calm. It might be the shortest song that we play up there just because it's how the song was written. But it's one of those things you never want to end. Man, they, they, they love it. And then my favorite Garth Brooks song always will be the dance way back off the first album. 
that's not a get up and get them going thing, but but they they know this lyric inside now, and they've either used it as a school senior senior prom kind of thing, they've used it in funerals, they've used it at uh, you know uh, at, at all the different occasions. So take Garth Brooks again out of it. The dance has kind of been the fabric of a lot of people's lives, and so when you see that, they take that very much to heart. So it's a it's a beautiful uh, beautiful moment. Sorry, man, because uh, they live these moments. So right now, I'm standing on stage tonight in my head, watching what the dance will get to do to them and to me. So that's the cool thing. You guys try to remember that you don't do this unless you sit in the seats first. And I've been a concert goer. I couldn't afford to go to concerts when I was a kid. So my girlfriend bought tickets to the concert. My brother bought tickets to the concert. So it was a long time before I got to buy my own ticket or could afford to. It was George Strait in Oklahoma City at the fairgrounds, right? And that's that's who you want to be still to this day. So as somebody that sits in the seat, you know what you want to see those people on the stage do. And what you want them to do is make... You, all of us feel like somehow tonight is its own night. That's just it. Don't give me a cookie cutter. Oh, I saw the show in Houston. It's the same thing. From down the brakes to everything. Show me how Regina makes Garth Brooks music different. And that won't be hard to find if you just look in those people's faces and see what they want. They're going to tell you what they're going to want. And that's the crazy thing. They, they have their opinions. They're going to tell you what works, and they're sure so going to tell you what doesn't. And if you're smart, you'll learn what to do. Yes, sir. Reg from 91.3 FM CJTR. How you doing, Reg? Good. Uh, Reg, um, all that being said, do you have a song that you would say you're the most proud of? Oh, sure. And why? Yeah, I think the song, I think all of us will agree on Garth Brooks' script, there's one song that had to overcome the most. It's probably We Shall Be Free. But yet, to hear these people sing, oh, it'll be brilliant. Reg, to be standing in the Fest Hall in Germany and know that this hall was built to listen to Hitler give his speeches and to hear everybody in those seats singing, we shall be free. Man, that's when you try not to. It's when you want to take Garth Brooks out of it, but at the same time, you're so freaking proud that uh, your ego kind of wants to stay in. That would be it. Thunder Rolls came over a lot. But the cool thing about tonight, that if if they if they go the way I'm hoping they go, the Garth Brooks crowd allows you to play new stuff. Now let's let's all face it, we all love our artists and we all have a thousand copies of the first three or four albums that artists did, but the newer stuff we just don't do. These people will treat the new stuff like the old stuff. For one, they know you're gonna play all the old stuff, so they're not worried about it. But second, they are so sweet to to find something in that vein that they love from the old stuff in the new stuff as well. And they will treat it that way, I hope. And if they do, I'll make sure to stop the show and thank them for doing that. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Lindsay. Hi, Lindsay. I heard you mention the first concert that you were at, but I was totally curious. When was the last concert that you got to go to and actually enjoy? Um, <laughs> well, you, you kind of enjoy all of them because <laughs> at this point, you don't go to a show you're not going to enjoy, okay. right? So uh, my wife wanted to go see Bruno uh, for her birthday, um, which was last year. Um, this is her last birthday in September, so it's almost been a year. And uh, it was cool. It was cool. I found myself, we just came in. Our, oh, you know what? No, January of this year, we were at Napa, Idaho, to see Seeger on his, on his uh, final one as well. So it, it's pretty cool. You walk in there, and of course, they, they, when the lights go down, they, they have you go in. And you walk in and you got your hat down and then you get in your place. And once you get in your place, you're one of them. Nobody else is doing anything but focusing on that stage. So now you get to be the guy in the seat. And with Bruno, all I want to do is come over the corner and do that smile that he does. And man, you know, I, I don't think I'm gay. But <laughs> when he smiled like that, I just melted. You know, I just love it. It was great. And then Bob, you just wanted him to never quit because... There was probably five songs we left from Seeger going. The guy just played for two and a half hours. There was probably five songs of his that he didn't play uh, because he just got so many of them. 
And uh, so it's pretty cool. He had some stuff because we haven't played this in 30 years. And you're thinking, well, I'm not going to know. Surely I'm not that old. It's one of my favorites. I'm not trying. So uh, it, it was cool to get to do the discovery with Seeger. Seeger speaks to you between every song and kind of lets you know where you're at, which makes whatever's coming really delicious to, to swallow because now he's letting the story up to it. When he said, this is for my mother, so it's always her favorite song. All my mama's boy, right? So I'm thinking, wow, what cool song would his mom do? And, you know, he goes, we got tonight. Who needs tomorrow? And now, because it's his mom's song, it's ten times cooler to me, you know. And I love that song to begin with, so now I love it ten times more. So smart that way that he he brings us along in the journey. It's something that I can use as an artist to try to do the same thing. Yes, sir. Hi, Callie. You spoke about some of your songs being like a funeral. Yes, ma'am. Tomorrow never comes to play. The grass is funeral. But then also, your music is played by people wanting to be back, have a beer. What's it like for you to have your be helpful for people in their happiest moments and in their toughest. Well, it's the greatest compliment you can get. So we talked about this earlier. They can give you Grammys. They can give you, oh, this stuff's cool. But the best thing in the world is to hear somebody say, they played it tomorrow never comes at my granddaughter's funeral. I mean, I, I don't know how to explain this. Funerals are already really tough for me anyway. Um, because I love the stories that funerals people tell, things you didn't know. But you're sitting there and you're holding your wife's hand. And all you can think about is how beautiful she is. What a beautiful day this is. We're all getting to praise this person, man or woman, that has passed. And she's getting she's getting a day of honor, right? And then, boom, all of a sudden you hear the piano for the dance. And you just go, and you realize you get to be a part of these people's lives. It's sweet. There was one funeral. That I went to, I love this woman. She was like a second grandmother to our children. And the river started. And I, I just took a deep breath. And then whoever was singing it wasn't me. <laughs> they had, they, I don't know where they got the version from. <laughs> so, you know, iTunes does a lot of, uh, since we're not on there, to do a lot of uh, whatever those people sound like you. <laughs> and so I guess they just well we gotta get the river so we took it off iTunes I guess and it's like that's not me but yeah love the song it's, 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 yes hi I'm Buzz from Jack 945 what's your name Buzz Buzz uh, so you've got two big shows in Regina you're gonna have a little bit of downtime between your shows what are you planning on doing in Regina when you're not on stage oh I'm planning on sleeping I'm an old guy <laughs> so uh, we're gonna have we'll see what they do to us tonight. We'll see how much they take out. And if they if they came here like I think they're going to, I'm going to need everything I can to get on that stage the next night. Um, try to remember that in Saskatoon, you're in a hockey arena. So your stage dimension is 60 feet wide, 40 feet deep. Let's just make it easy for the hockey, uh, for the dashers. Here, the stage is 150 feet wide by 100 deep. Okay. Your ass is everywhere. And it better be because there's a lot more people. So that size matters thing. Also, it's, it's going to increase your intensity. Because one thing I can't do is I can't let somebody in the audience feel like I can't let them doze off. I've got to keep, I've got to keep them in it, right? And the great thing about this, I'll explain a little inside entertainment that I shouldn't. If you're not getting what you need from one side of the crowd, <laughs> now you watch what happens next time you go over there they're going to be nuts so that's that's fun to get to work them and i'll work them against each other and uh, we'll have fun tonight but um that's that's probably that's probably it um the queen is in town with us so she's she's here um this is going to be the first one that she hasn't done a tailgate at just because the the laws are different here uh than they are back in the states so she's uh she's here with me just kind of be um just arm candy, and hey, you can't pick better arm candy than that, right? And uh, so we're going to do some stuff together. We'll probably go shopping and just whatever she wants to do. But she's right in the middle of filming her season for cooking, uh, her next season, which means that woman might not wake up the whole weekend she's here. I don't know. Because, I, you know, in our business, I don't know how it's in yours, but in our business, a woman has to work a thousand times harder to get a tenth as much. So she's always working. So if I get to come home tonight and hear her purr and just snore in the the better all I can think is good for her and, and she's earned it. So I hope she takes advantage of it this time. Mark, yes, ma'am. Can we switch over? 
The wrap it up, you mean? Do one on ones? Anybody yeah. have? You, you want to give you want to grab I, I wouldn't do. Uh, my name's Colin from CKRM. Hey, Colin. Back in '92, you and I had a pretty good discussion. Uh, back in the '90s, the the decade of the social policy and 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 we discussed the, uh, the possibility of maybe country music fracturing off. Because yes. Nowadays, it's so eclectic. There's so many styles. There's so many. There's pro country. And there's like hip hop. Right. Do you still see any pitfalls with country music these days? Well, first of all, unity is a definition of country music. Now, in the business side of it, would it help us to have five different charts? Because some artists can be played on all five, which then makes you compete with a pop artist that get to do that. You betcha. That would help us in the business end of it. I like the fact that we kind of stay uh, unity-wise. But here's the good thing. The, the difference me and you were talking about then was they were launching things called Young Country. Old Country is like, let's don't, let's don't splinter. Let's stay a family and unit because we were the format in the 90s. That was the most successful um that was the most successful decade in music history. So uh, we were lucky enough to kind of be in that, in that wave. Um, but now I can tell you this unity works. And if we split off into two or three different ones, it's still going to help the business. So we can't lose either way now. Then my fear was splintering. Now all it does is that if we follow the path of pop radio where you hear different kinds of stuff on different stations, but... They all have like pop, we might have five different formats, but you're going to hear Adele on all five of them. You're going to hear a JT on all five of them, you know, Bruno on all five of them. Then right now, then that makes what, it just makes me think that country music is going to grow if that happens. So I don't fear it, if that answers your question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Tina from CKBI Radio. Hi, Tina. I'm sorry, Kim. We're just having a good time. I'm having a good time. Uh, Saskatchewan has, I guess, been characterizing. Can you talk a little bit about the work you're doing with Seacombs and the Dive Bar Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Um, you know, when we talk about impaired driving, and I don't know how it is up here, but in the States, it's now coming to other substances that they've made legal uh, as well. So um, it's all about responsibility, man, but it's all about having a good time. And since we do a lot of, um, since social media has kind of made us a culture within ourselves, we do a lot of things on our own. Thank God for, and I'm not sure about what you guys have here, but we have a lot of Uber, Lyft, a lot of stuff back there. So Seagram 7 has, has made this the year of the dive bar, the summer of the dive bar, for two reasons. To preserve your local dive bar, because for some people they treat it kind of like, and forgive me if this offends by like a church, full of people that kind of <clears throat> are going through the same thing you're going through. Somebody to talk to a community. And then the second thing and the most important one that I think is the best part of their drive for the dive bar summer is making sure that you get from that bar home safely. And even more than that, everyone around you is safe on your way home. So they're encouraging, you know, uh, a lot of designated drivers, uh, but really encouraging Uber, Lyft, cabs, all those things as well, uh, because Impaired driving is a, is a big lack of responsibility for the actions you're taking yourself. So they would love to see those numbers decrease. And again, like we talk about ego that you want, I'm sure Seagrams would love to see that decrease and feel like they, their pledge for this, the jointhepack.com. You can go to jointhepack.com. They're trying to get 700,000 signatures on there of people that are going to act more responsibly when they're drinking. I like anything that assures a good time, but a safe. Good time. So proud of them and proud to be their partner. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Kim. Oh, yes. Sherry from I'm a Sherry. Refined. Do I do? I look like <laughs> 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 Very refined. <laughs> uh, just noticing the artwork out there. Awesome. Yeah. 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 You know, what, where does that come into play here? I know your legacy, that was a legacy. Yes, ma'am. Uh, it was kind of serendipitous. We didn't know it was the 50th anniversary when we started this. But our partners at NASA who provided all this artwork has been so sweet to us. You know, we did the, they had uh, two fish uh, up there who launches with all car stuff. And they had uh, astronauts up there who, um, they have a young lady there that just slays my heart every time. But. She, uh, they do a lot of launches out of Russia now, so it's, it's, it's partnerships. And so they're sitting there and they have like a two minute delay. And they go, does anybody want to say anything? And all their heads are down. And the little girl just starts singing the river. My gosh. So I immediately fell in love with this group. 
good guys, and there's a DJ, since we always have to kind of be equal when it comes to country radio, we never say call letters, call letters. There's a DJ in the Northwest that's convinced that our next concert will be the first one that's ever played on the moon. <laughs> so this was the kind of the joke that kind of led to this. But I love this. I took this picture myself. Um, this is a selfie. I'm, in real life, I'm right here. But uh, it was so cool, and I love this. I love this whole thing. So um, hats off to NASA. Hats off to, to Lou and Jeff Crump, who designed all this. And uh, I think, try it again, try to take me out of it. I think that's one of the coolest freaking pictures I've ever seen in my life right there. So. Yeah, Garth, I think it's cool, but go with the 50th anniversary thing. Uh, <laughs> 50th anniversary of the moon land, the moon walk, yeah. It's cool. This is uh, this is actually Apollo 14, though. That's not the actual uh, one. The astronaut was in a cool position. All right. Okay. Miss Kim? We're good. Thank you. If the television crews would come up and everybody else would stay seated for a minute, thank you. 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 Thank